Are you looking to quit your nine to five to pursue starting a YouTube channel, grow a business, or chase your dreams? On this episode of The VI Show, we have the exact person to help you out. Peter Vogt is the number one best-selling author of the book, Six Months of Six Figures, now with almost half a million copies sold. The founder of the Game Changers Academy and Young Entrepreneur Lifestyle Podcast, Peter has built multiple six and seven figure businesses in different industries. He's on a mission to help you escape the rat race so you can build your dream businesses and lifestyles on your own terms. All that and more on the VI Show coming up. This video is brought to you by vidIQ, the number one Chrome extension for YouTubers looking for on-point data analysis, research resources, and enhanced video creator tools. Start getting more views in less time today by signing up for free at vidIQ.com slash influence. That's vidIQ.com slash influence. Welcome back to the VI show. Hey, you might notice that I'm not Benji Travis, Sean Cannell here, and uh, we're doing a special pivot episode because Benji Travis right now is at the hospital with his wife, Judy, having a baby. She's doing most of the work in turn. I mean, all the work. Come on, ladies, uh, when it comes to having the actual baby. But uh, we have Peter Vug on today, and uh, I jumped in to host the show. I'm so fired up because uh, Peter's not just a good friend, but he's a super inspiring entrepreneur. And today's content is really gonna help you uh, create an action plan to navigate out of your nine to five if you want to. Now, you may not wanna leave your nine to five, you may just wanna build a side hustle, you may just want to have uh, some online income, or you may wanna grow your existing business or become an influencer, whatever it is, you're gonna love the six tips step-by-step -step today that Peter's gonna be breaking down. So I wanna encourage you to shut out distractions, maybe grab something to write with, because this is where we really get to work. We're gonna be thinking about our businesses, thinking about our targets, our financial goals, and so that we can actually make a plan. Look, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Prior planning prevents poor performance, like planning and thinking things through. And so uh, I'm excited to welcome Peter Vu. Peter, how is it going? And uh, welcome back to Video Influencers. Amazing, man. I'm excited to be here and thank you. It's always fun doing uh, videos with you. We've done quite a bit together. so and, and I love how quickly you guys pivot and adapt and adjust. That, that's so needed right now in the economy where literally within 20 minute notice, you can take over and kill it. So I love it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And I'm excited to get right into these tips. Lay a foundation here. We've got six tips and it's all about how we could transition from our nine to five. Let us know, tell us in the comments if you're watching this, what is your, your goal? Do you want to uh, add extra revenue streams by leveraging YouTube and social media to your current business? Do you wanna go full time as a content creator or as an influencer? Um, maybe what's a f monthly financial target that would mean freedom or a level of autonomy for you? Tell us what one of your ambitions and your goal is. Peter, paint the whole picture of context of what you're about to break down in these six tips and a little bit of your story because you have had a crazy story where this is the path you followed to build not just an incredible business but really a world-class lifestyle where you live on your own terms you just had a son you and your wife are able to travel work from wherever you want and you've done that intentionally step by step so how did this all happen just give us a little backstory so first of all there was no steps when i was doing it uh, I was failing through and, and I feel like I, I wish I had clarity. So I like to reach back and give people exact steps. This is from 12 to 15 years thinking back, like what were the exact steps I took to go from employee, to go from a job I didn't enjoy, to actually creating a business and a life on my terms. So they came from being in the trenches and they came from actual experience. And by the way, I just want to give context. It's crazy, Sean, when I hear my intro, it always, it always blows my mind in a humble way because I'm from a super small town of like 6,000 people on the Oregon coast. Uh, there was no entrepreneurs around me. No one was making money. Um, if you would have bet me I was going to make six and seven figures as an entrepreneur, I would have laughed in your face. So to hear these things and, and to see my life now, it's almost surreal, but it was because I took these specific action steps and there were some specific breakthroughs I had along the way that I'll include in these actual six steps. But it came from just experience, man. I had jobs I didn't like and I, I knew there was a better way. Um, so from these steps, 
I was able to go from dead broke to six figures within six months and then seven figures shortly after. And now realizing that whether I make $100 million a year or $3 million a year, it means nothing if I don't have a lifestyle I'm inspired by and a lifestyle I'm proud of. Because there's a lot of influencers and entrepreneurs out there that always promote hustle, grind, hustle, grind. And they work 100 hours a week, but they don't see their kids. Their family doesn't know who they are. I didn't want to be like that. So I really have been purposeful in how I've exited uh, the corporate world, the nine to five world into my own business on my terms. And now I've been fortunate to help thousands of people in the previous 10 years do the same. And I'm super excited to share this because I think right now what, what people need to understand is most of the jobs we thought were secure aren't secure anymore. I know somebody who went to eight years of college, Sean, eight years, not four years, eight years, had the same job 15 years and got fired with no notice in the past month. No support, just no notice, you're fired, right? Some people have lost everything and didn't see it coming. So I think the best place to place all your bets are, are is on yourself right now. And I think that's important. I think the employee mindset has to kind of be pushed aside a little bit um, because of what's going on right now. And I want to be the person that kind of helps people develop these skills and has a proven roadmap to follow that actually works. So that, that's kind of where it came from. Man, that's so powerful. And so let's dive in and then we'll start going through these six tips. In this video, you're going to be learning Peter's six tips. And then towards the end, we'll also be talking about maybe some different opportunities um, in terms of what kind of business you could create. What I love about Peter is most of who he works with, he's not necessarily helping somebody become a YouTuber to focus on YouTube ads. That's actually a pretty bad strategy. Not a lot of people are gonna get like large enough YouTube channels to get enough with YouTube ads to make a living, but this is really about not making a living from YouTube, but using YouTube to make your living. So you gotta figure out a vehicle, like what is it you sell? It could be direct selling, it could be being an influencer, it could be creating a product, a service, it could be uh, doing real estate, it could be all these different things. And so we'll talk a little bit of, of that towards the end, but Peter, the first tip here is before doing anything else, you say figure out your why, 50 reasons, <clears throat> what does that mean? So. Most people are disengaged. I think Forbes said 76% of people uh, last year were disengaged at work, like not enjoying. There's, I think, 90,000 hours of your life you spend at a job, and most people hate their job. So most people spend most of their life miserable. And it just it sounds like, no way. And you, which, when you really look out in society, you can see that. And I want to be the one to help play my part to change that. So I think with anything, Sean, you have to have compelling reasons of why you do what you do. Now, the figure out your why and know your why is so overplayed now, so I don't wanna talk about it in context of you gotta know your why, but just from my experience, when you literally think about the emotional frustrations you've had at a job you don't like or previous experiences in your life that have shaped who you are and you stack all that ammo, it's easier to take action and uh, reasons come first, results come second. So I tell people, figure out your strongest 50 reasons of why you want to create a side hustle, on why you want to transition from your nine to five to entrepreneur. If you don't have enough reasons, it, it's very easy to play the, I'll do it later. You know those people that say, well, I, I can't wait to quit my nine to five. Not right now. Right now is not a good time, but I will soon. And then six months goes by and a year goes by and four years go by and they're like, well, not yet. They're still, and they always have this validation. Reasons kill validations. So for me, here's an example. I'm 15 years old. Um, I start selling shoes on eBay. My dad does construction. Uh, all my friends work with my dad doing construction. For some reason, I just don't like it. I'm like, this is horrible. Now, for people that like construction and hard labor and busting their butt, much respect, right? So this is not like I don't respect them. It's like I just didn't want to do it. We were shoveling sand. Um, we were like doing all these things that I just didn't enjoy. And my dad knew that. But one day, the breakthrough for me was I had checked my uh, – I, I told my dad I can't work today. And he knew I didn't want to do hard labor. But my friends kind of didn't really have a choice. So they're like, I'm going to keep working. I'm like, I got to go do something else. So I checked my shoes on eBay. One pair um, sold and I made $91. 
And I added up the the $7 or whatever hours I was making with my dad and it was like $63 for the whole day. So my friends busted their butt, were sweating. They worked eight hours shoveling sand and I make more money just by putting something on eBay and selling it for more. So my 15 year old mind is like confused. I'm like, is this even legal? How did, how did I just make money with my mind and with my intelligence? not with my, with my uh, like hard labor. So that's when it first started. Like, I think it is possible to make money based off your intelligence and your mind and your skills, not just hard labor, right? Using your brain. So that was my first story. So I knew it was possible and people need to realize I got paid at that age just for the courage to think a little bit differently and the courage to um, take risks, right? Second thing is fast forward. I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm in a super small conservative town where most people have nine to fives. So I'm telling everybody, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I want to be my own boss. And you can guess what happens in a small town when you say that. Not 99%, 100% of the people I told were like, oh, you can't do that. Oh no, you're going to fail. You're a small town. You got to get a nine to five. So of course, I I don't have any other guidance. So I'm like, okay, I'll get a normal job. So I will get a job at a casino valeting cars. You don't have to be 18 or 21 to get a job valeting cars at a casino, which is crazy. So I'm valeting cars. Um, there's someone that works there that had been there about a year longer than me, six months to a year longer than me. He's getting paid more, but he does bare minimum. I'm like, wait, he's doing nothing. I- I'm, a- I'm going extra mile. I'm adding more value. I'm valeting more cars. I'm helping customers. I got a letter written about me from a customer about how I opened the door and how I was super nice and, and compassionate. He makes more, but he cuts corners just because he was there longer. Once again, my, my 17, 18 year old head's like, uh, this is weird. I'm confused. So I add up my paycheck for the, for the uh, week. Okay, 7.05 an hour times 40 hours a week. I times it by four. I'm going to work there three months in the summer. I times it by three months. I'm like, no matter what I do, I'm making this exact same amount. Instantly, my motivation like disappears. Why would I go extra mile if I'm making the same amount no matter what? That's my breakthrough number two. I'm like, this is this doesn't feel right. I want to be paid based off my value and based off my skills and who I am, not what other people think I'm worth, right? Third thing, there's a family event. I'm not going to go too into detail. Um, someone can't make a very important event for my mom that she's known for a long time, her whole life. And she wrote a handwritten letter. She had everything planned a year in advance. And one person couldn't make it, and it was one of her closest uh, friends. And we found out later, why couldn't she make it? Couldn't get time off, didn't have the money. So I'm like, this person's 40, 45 years old. I'm like, how is this possible that someone can be 45? Now, it sounds uh, egotistical now. It's like, how can someone not afford? But I'm 18, 19. Like, I don't ever want to be 45 or 50 and not be able to take time off when I want because I saw how disappointed my mom was. I don't want to not have money to travel when I'm 45 or 50. So I was trying to think ahead. So those three things, Sean, those reasons stuck with me forever. So during the tough times of entrepreneurship, when I did transition, I kept thinking about those reasons. Like I'm not going back. I also made it verbal when I told all my friends and family I was going to be an entrepreneur. So that's the importance of reasons. There's so much emotional, compelling things that you think about. Maybe how your boss treats you. You have to grab so much emotional frustration from your past experiences that it's inevitable that you're going to be resourceful and find a way. That's step one. And that's why it's so important. Man, that's so powerful, Peter. And, um, uh, your audio kind of started getting faded at the end there. I don't know if you can reconnect your mic, but I think everybody could still hear you. Um, and so many powerful things. Peter was talking about tapping into your reasons, these stories, these moments in your life that shape your drive that shape you thinking differently, that whether it was, man, I want to have control of my own paycheck, that the valet person who's working half as hard and being lazy and I'm working more, but I can't control my own destiny. I can't control my mo- my own income. So finding new drive or fire out of that, seeing stuff happen with his mom or seeing the fact of the power of thinking differently and being rewarded for uh, putting shoes on eBay and selling. Uh, so I want to ask you influencers, what are some of your 
reasons? What are your compelling reasons? And Peter recommended write down 50. Um, and you know, you might write down 50. It could be things like someday I want to have this car, someday I want to have this house or whatever. But then you'll probably get to a few reasons that really are a core driving force for you. I know for me, 2009, uh, my wife Sonia almost died. And um, I was uh, going through a hard time because the real estate market was crashing. Same time, that's when Benji and I met. Um, we were having str struggles at my uh, church that was falling apart. I was part time there. Some senior leadership stole some money. So that was falling apart. And then my wife's health's under attack. And so I came into this season of like intense, if you will, fire and pressure. And I started to ask God, why is this happening? But then what am I going to do? And I was I lit a fire in me that I got to step up as a leader. I got to step up as a provider. I got to step up and find a way to build a life on my own terms, not for fame and fortune, but for freedom and for family and to fight for my faith. And so that's when I really started to go all in trying to um, figure out this online stuff. And that has been a reason that has lit a fire in my heart since that time. So tell us one of your reasons and journal out a, a couple because you always want to come back to those. You know, when you're transitioning from nine to five, like Peter said, growing up in a small town, I did as well. And sometimes your small town can make you small minded. Sometimes your small town can your small business can make you small minded or those around you, they have that perspective. And that's not meant to be condescending or a put down. That's meant to be uh, just thinking about the fact that's the perspective level. It's kind of the water level of what people consider as normal or possible. And so if you're going to rise above that, if you're going to step out of that, um, it uh, can be something that takes a lot of grit, a lot of resilience. It can be a lonely path. Um, but when you come back to your reasons and you get up to fight a day uh, after, day by day by day by day. And so, um, Peter, uh, let's check in on uh, your audio. How's that sounding? Uh, it should be better now. What do you think? Yeah, good. We I got it. Maybe... Yeah, it sounds great. Oh, why it's not popping up. Yo, yo, yo. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah it sounds great. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, tip number one is figure out your why. And then uh, tip number two is strength and frustration, though. That's the next step on the way to transition from your nine to five into a full-time thing. What do you mean by strength and frustration? So you need to start figuring out who you are and what your strengths are. And, of course, keep in mind things that frustrate you. Keep in mind things that you can't stand. Keep in mind things that really trigger or bug you uh, about a nine to five about your job about life in general maybe it's having a boss maybe it's not having freedom maybe uh it's a specific situation where you're on call and they call you when maybe you're with your kids the frustration i think was a huge part for me because i had so much built up that it wasn't even an option that i was going to not um be my own boss right and in this tip sean it's just taking very few opinions you talked about being from a small town as well um, I like that I'm from a small town because I have small town roots and I like going back there, but it's just taking very few opinions and only taking opinions from people that really you would trade places with. Um, and in terms of strengths, I, for one, was asking the people that I respected, what do you think I'm good at? What do you, th where could you see me if I became an entrepreneur, what could you see me doing? And some people are like, oh, I could see you selling. I could see you impacting. You're very passionate. You're very intense. I can see you motivating and impacting people, right? So I started thinking, oh, that's my strength. So based on conversations, based on due diligence and previous experience, think about what your biggest strengths are as a human being. Maybe it's listening. Maybe it's uh, problem solving. Maybe it's taking action and getting results. Maybe it's relationship building. Maybe it's being a visionary. Figure out your biggest strengths. Once you have your reasons written down, now it's like, okay, what am I good at? Um, what am I not good at? And what really frustrates me about my situation or in general, what frustrates me? For me, you couldn't pay me $100 million, Sean, to, to be someone else, to have someone else control my schedule because it, it, money is not the issue anymore. You could not pay me enough to, to allow control over me. So that's just me though. I know what frustrates me. I was, I was in a sales job just being transparent because people deserve this. And these days people just are not transparent. I don't feel online. 
Um, I was making almost four hundred thousand dollars a year at 24, 25 years old, and I, I had ninety eight percent flexibility. Okay, and there was like two percent that I still had to be at events. I still had to do certain things. I had guidelines. That two percent drove me crazy. So even though I was only working because I delegated my a lot of my business, I was only working twenty five to thirty five hours making four hundred k at that young age. Still couldn't be controlled. I still wanted to be 100% free. Now, that's just me. One of my frustrations is when someone else tells me, hey, you have to do this. Hey, don't say that. That's offensive. Hey, you can't do this. Hey, watch your image here. I can't stand that. So just figure out your strengths and your frustrations. And, and, and that can continue to create reasons for you to figure out the next steps, which we'll talk about. Does that make sense? So, oh, so powerful. And so influencers drop that. And, and I hope you're kind of like, taking notes throughout this because this is about getting massive clarity on your personal pathway for reaching autonomy for building a life on your own terms for generating that income and so what are your strengths and and be gracious on yourself here i think that sometimes we downplay um you know our own strengths we, we don't even realize our own expertise we don't realize that you've already read five books on something you stay up late researching something watching videos that you what your educations have been i do a lot of coaching with people and one uh, i was talking to a lady and she's like i just don't think i i really know much and i was like like you've got so many letters after your name. I don't even know what they all mean. You've got like your masters. You've got like this creative license therapist thing. You've got like, you've got a lot. You just got to know you have a lot to give. So be really bold about what are your strengths and then what frustrates you and, uh, and be taking those notes. And if you've been getting value out of this, uh, hit the like button. And also, I want to encourage you to check out resources in the description below. Of course, we've got Peter's book down there. We've got the four. But just if you want some more resources, uh, Peter stuff is so great to help you get massive clarity in um, his journey from six months to six figures. But Peter, let's go number three to now increase your certainty. So we've figured out we're writing down our reasons, our why. We're writing down these two columns of what frustrates us and then what are our strengths to get clarity on our path to uh, leaving our nine to five or do whatever it is we want to do financially or something side hustle wise, but now it's about increasing your certainty. What do you mean by that? So let now, so the first two were more emotional and mental. Now it's more tactical and physical. So everyone's going to find a way to create some certainty. And one of the biggest reasons that I've seen through a lot of surveying and research and, and, and due diligence and conversations, most people don't want to leave their nine to five because they want certainty and they want certainty that their paycheck's coming. Uh, every Friday, every Monday. I don't even know when people get paid, right? Friday, Monday, Wednesday, 15th, 1st. They want that certainty. So if, they, if there's no other certainty in their life for entrepreneurship, they will stay at that nine to five. And here's what people need to realize. If I could say anything, Sean, it's understanding there's no more certainty. Like certainty is getting wiped out by industries, by robots, by all these things changing, by supply and demand, by Amazon, by these big companies. The only certainty we really have now is a certainty in ourselves and our ability to make things happen. So the first thing people need to do is figure out a way to increase your certainty away from someone else and away from a nine to five. So the first step, because here's what I've realized and it's sad, but it's true. A lot of people are working just hard enough at their job so they don't get fired. But the companies are smart. They know that. So they're paying people just enough so they won't quit. And it's a vicious cycle. So do your due diligence. What that means is study industries. The more due diligence you do, the more you increase your certainty. So study entrepreneurship, study watch documentaries, study specific things that you feel like you want to get into, study specific entrepreneurs, study people that have uh, transitioned from nine to five to entrepreneurship, study things like this. You're already doing your due diligence, right? Second thing is your network. What I mean is people that want to get nine to fives, they stay with people that are in their nine to five. They stay friends with them, which is great. You can stay friends. But if you're only connecting with people in your industry that are working nine to five, you transition out because they're like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't you want the security? You might fail. I had a friend one time that tried entrepreneurship and he went broke and lost his family. And they have, they're just spewing fear at you because people in fear love to put others in fear because it makes them feel better about living in fear. 
right? So start elevating your network and get around people that are already entrepreneurs. Get around people that are making the entrepreneur thing work. When you get around people that are making the entrepreneur thing work, your certainty goes from the nine to five to hmm, maybe I can create my own certainty. These five people have done it. I can do it too. And that's what I mean by increase your certainty. Those are the two things that I found that increase certainty the most is doing your due diligence and then getting around people that have already made money as an entrepreneur. And then think, asking them, why did you quit your nine to five? And stacking up, once again, reasons why it's important to leave, whether it's for your family, for freedom, flexibility, whether it's being disrespected by your boss. I don't know, but that's what I mean. I think that's super important. So powerful. And that makes me just think about the fact that doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And self-doubt is, is too real. I mean, I just think it, a lack of confidence, a lack of self-belief, a lack of that, of stepping out and taking risks, and that inner drive that realizes that failures are just stepping stones to success. We're going to fail a lot. Like every single YouTuber, creator, influencer, you're going to fail a ton, but it's not failure. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. But if you don't have certainty to stick with it, and uh, I love what you're saying, Peter. I see uh, Chantel from Gov Success, and we were just doing um, kind of uh, some private coaching the other day this week. And I was talking with her about the 25% rule. And so everybody write this down in terms of certainty. I think what's cool about the 25% rule, I don't know if Peter would agree with this, but this is a framework that um, I like to help people with. When do you potentially give your two weeks notice? When do you step out? The 25% rule says this, step one, how much money do you need per month to live? So let's for easy math, and I'm not talking about live fancy. I'm saying you now get to work on your own terms. So like how much to take care of your family, survive. If you got 20 kids and you live in Manhattan, you probably need 25 grand. If you live in middle America and you're single, you might be able to live on your buddy's couch and like save uh, on a lot less money. Let's just say $4,000 a month for easy math. Then the 25% rule is when you have made $1,000, 25% of your target monthly amount doing a side hustle, so doing a YouTube channel, doing affiliate marketing, direct selling, say it like whatever it is, start even you're doing real estate on the side because you want some autonomy selling houses, doing whatever, whatever your method of making money is on your side hustle. Once you hit that target, give your two weeks notice because you've proven that you can earn that money on the side in the after hours to your day job. Now what happens when your whole week is focused on making up the other 75%? And personally, I knew that while I was a freelancer and doing video production for other people and whatnot, I was chipping away on YouTube and talking about doing tech reviews on um, my channel, Think Media, and I was making about than YouTube ads and that started to scale up and scale up and then eventually I was actually pushed out because uh, my all my freelance clients in one month's time transition and they let me go fire me let me go and so I no longer had a boss and and some entrepreneurs or generally you have to you eventually have to jump off the cliff in entrepreneurship and we're gonna get into that point in just a second I got kicked off the cliff and I just stuck with it and thankfully for good mentors and people around me they're like no you just got to lean into this but I was at about 25 percent fast forward a couple months I was uh, my just my wife and I living in Vegas we uh, had hit about $4,500 a month off the Amazon affiliate program, about another 500 off of uh, YouTube ads. And so we were at like 60K a year, a couple months after going all in. And then from there, it just stacked and built and built and built because all I was working on was my online business. So let's bring it back practically. What is your 25% rule? How much do you need to live? If you don't even know that, you haven't done the math yet. And then, um, start figuring out your vehicle and then on the side be thinking about okay i'm i'm getting close to that now or once i've hit that hey boss give me my two weeks notice because now i'm going all into my online business to make up that difference and um uh that is the 25 percent rule if you want to share some of those in the comments let us know down below hit the like button if you're getting value we're going to pick up speed here uh but peter as we get into number four 
Uh, I would love to hear number four is set a date, which is set a date to go all in to quit your job. But I'm curious what you think about that 25% rule in terms of of uh, being practical on paper as far as how much you need to live, doing the math, and really adding everything up. I like it, and I think it it creates urgency. And I think mixing that with the date is a great combination. If they have the 25% and they set a date, uh, the date could be six months out, right? But as time decreases, intensity and resourcefulness increase. So that's what I tell people. I want to quit my job. First question I always ask is, what's the date? And literally 99 out of 100 of them say, well, I don't know yet. I'm, it's depending. No, no, no. You have to work backwards. This is how entrepreneurs and this is how the, the highest level achievers work. It's not circumstantial. It's based on what they want. It's just like when I talk about setting a vision. Well, I'm not sure which company I want to join. I don't No, 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 no. Don't base your vision off of your previous experience or off your insecurities. Most people do that. Don't do that. Base your vision and what you want off what's possible and off your potential. So don't say, well, the date needs to be four years from now because these 19 things have to happen in order. That's not how it works. Trust me. We are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. So set an exact date. I've helped so many people and I have stories in my head going through of people that literally have set dates. Now, it might not happen on the exact date. That's irrelevant to effort and to the actual action that you take because you're going to be more prepared than ever when there's a date coming. So I tell people, set an exact date. December 1st, 2020, I'm quitting. Here's the things that need to happen by then, and you'll become more resourceful. You'll stack up your reasons. You'll get around higher level people. You'll do your research, and trust me, it is possible. It happens all the time, but to light some fire under your butt now, it's now or never. People are losing jobs quicker than I've ever seen in my entire existence as a human. This is scary, right? But it's also made it more possible than ever to start an online business because in the next six months to a year, there's going to be millions that go online that are going to be needing your guidance. So if you can really get ahead of the curve by a couple months and start understanding how to start a business, I think you're going to be able to get a lot of customers if you understand what Sean teaches, video influencers, marketing, education-based marketing, positioning. So that's, that's all it is, man. Just set a date and follow through on that date because as the time decreases, your resourcefulness and your, your mindset shifts to solve the problems you need to quit. It's a strange thing, but it happens that way. Brilliant. Chantel says December 18, 2020, and way to take action on uh, being bold and putting a date out there. It's kind of like uh, when you know you have a test and you haven't been studying, so what do you do the night before you cram? Because the test is coming no matter what. I love, Peter, that you're talking about deadlines. And so many of us are afraid to actually put that on the calendar because then we can procrastinate away our life, our dreams. Um, and so it, it's, it gets you kind of nervous to set a date, to set a deadline. Um, but man, it increases increases resourcefulness and you'll find a way, uh, which leads us to point number five, which is get the best training. So uh, if you're just joining, we're talking about how to transition from your nine to five into full time with an online business. We're giving you kind of a framework here that Peter's designed. You got to figure out your why. Number one, you want to identify your strengths and frustrations. This is like the fuel that's going to get you there. Number three, you want to increase your certainty and that can have to do with who you're around, your network. You then want to set a date. You got to pick a time. When are you going to transition? When are you going to go all in? And then you're going to work backwards from there, right? Now the pressure's on and pressure makes diamonds, right? Pressure is a good thing that'll push you towards those goals. And then, Peter, you said get the best training. So what do you mean here? So you just got to get the best training and guidance and start focusing on mastery, not overload. So don't study a bunch of random stuff. Once you have your strengths... And here's the cool thing. You have your strengths. You've now kind of elevated your network. One of the biggest uh, epiphanies I've ever had in my life was realizing that once you have a great network, you don't have to solve the problem anymore. They can help you solve them because they've been there. So when, when I say get the best training and guidance, when you already have your network, have them help you figure out the transition. Um, have them help you with what they did to make it work so you can cut your learning curve in half. So for me... This is when I started taking very few opinions because when I was struggling as an entrepreneur, um, when I went to the majority or society, I said, what's wrong? This is the number one piece of advice they gave me. Just work more. Just work harder. And I'm like, but I'm working 50 hours. Yeah, but you got to hustle. It's all about hustle. 
and I don't know better. So I listen to them. I'm like, okay, so then I worked 60 hours. Then I went to 80 hours. And of course, my results didn't change. So I started realizing maybe I shouldn't just listen to the majority or listen to the gurus. It's not about just hard work. It's not about working harder or smarter. It's about working right. Second thing is they're like, you don't have enough experience. You have to have a bunch of experience. When I started seeing 21, 22, 23-year-olds making six month, making millions online, and I started studying them and it said, oh, I've been in this three years. I've been in this a year and a half. I've been in this two years. I just learned how to leverage other people's platforms. I started seeing it's not really about experience anymore. It's not even about age. Age has become irrelevant. Someone says, I have 20 years of experience. No, you don't. You have one year repeated 20 times. If you're doing the same thing every year and you're not investing in yourself and growing and educating yourself, you just have one year repeated. So these are the things I started learning, Sean, when I got the best training and guidance. And if I wanted to start a membership, I would only study the best membership training. And for me, I would study free stuff first. But studying a bunch of free stuff online sometimes gets you a little overwhelmed. So when I finally had money, I was investing it right back in myself. I was investing back into the best training to figure out how to write a book. So everything I've ever done, I feel like that has caused me to have great breakthroughs and results was because of two things. Um, my, I elevated my network and I had a proven roadmap to follow once I invested in myself. So age has become irrelevant. Me and you both know 17, 18, 19 year olds making millions and we both know broke 40 and 50 year olds people say how does that happen how how do we have an economy where there's 21 year old millionaires and 50 year old broke people it, it blows my mind well one is willing to invest in themselves one is willing to become more valuable one is willing to adapt and adjust one understands supply and demand and one says i have all this experience i shouldn't have to learn it and that's just what happens the reality will tell you if you're growing or not right so that's what i I mean, it's just get them with whatever you want to do, e-com, YouTube. If you want to run Zoom meetings, direct sales, get the best training and guidance. Don't mess around. Peter dropping some fire. If you've been getting value, hit the like button. We've got the final tip coming up in just a second. Um, and uh, make sure you keep it locked here on the VI show. I'm Sean Cannell, and normally you have Benji Travis, but he's at the hospital having a baby right now. So I jumped in um, at the last minute to be a part of the VI show. Give it up for the baby. Wow, man, neutrally on the special effects and graphics. Y'all are crazy over here at the VI show. Um, also, over the next couple week ends, um, uh, because baby Benji's got a new baby, we actually had a plan to pivot. Um, and so I'm going to be hosting a couple new shows. I've got some guests. I'm going to do some solo rounds over the next couple weekends. So if you want to hang out more, join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We got another tip from Peter in just a second, uh, but I want to encourage you on a couple of resources. Um, he's got a great book, Six Months to Six Figures. I got the audio book. It is a killer book. Um, I listened to it, very motivating and um, very inspiring and really giving me fuel and fire for um, – uh, what I've done in my business and made a huge impact in my life. And uh, Peter and I also did a series called The Business Minded Content Creator. So if you really want to work on the stuff Peter's talking about in this training, right? I love Peter because he's a real entrepreneur, a real game changer in this kind of new era, new economy, and he'll help you get your mind right, get your business right, get your strategies right. And so we'll put a link to that playlist. Uh, we have a multi-part series if you want to really go deep and learn. But Peter specifically has a limited training. If you happen to be watching this live, um, there's not much more time to actually check this out. But Peter, what if people want to go a little bit deeper before we get into this final tip of the six tips um what training do you have out right now and what will people learn on it if they want to go a little bit deeper with you and get some additional content to give them an edge right now yeah so when you asked me at, at the beginning i was really thinking uh, i didn't come on here to promote anything but uh right when this recession hit i kept getting questions literally every day on my instagram what would you do if you had to start over or, or what, how would you make side income? I need help with side income. I, I want to figure out some side hustles. So I took a, a, three weeks, talked to my team. I really thought about based on all my people in my academy, what people are doing. So I created a video. It's a pretty deep dive video. It's not like a five, 10 minute. It's, it's deep dive and it's how to uh, kind of recession proof your income and the 20 most proven side hustle ideas that I've seen. Some of them I've used, some of them I've heard of, but people are crushing it. So, and I think people need to realize that more wealth is created in a down economy than in a great one. And one of the biggest breakthroughs for me, Sean, was 
when the economy goes down, the money doesn't disappear. It doesn't just poof, it's gone. It just transfers hands to the successful people who understand how to become more valuable. And this is, I think, a great way to become more valuable is learn how to make money as a side hustle. And a lot of these can be full-time careers eventually, but I just talk about how to turn your uncertainty into confidence, uh, the simple proven steps you can take to make money right now, and some of the the industries I feel like are going to blow up in the next six months to a year that most people aren't thinking about. So they can go to, did you put the link? It's, it's peterjvoog.com slash recession proof, but it's just a training. I feel like that would be great for anybody looking to make more money online. Awesome. So yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, it's only up for a little limited while longer, some premium content from Peter. So check that out. We'll put a link to the description below or peterjvoog.com forward slash recession proof. Um, we're going through these six steps. And so I hope you've been taking notes. Definitely check out the replay and maybe share this with somebody um, who is looking to break out of uh, kind of just the standard expectation of society, right? Everyone sometimes just has a limited view, but more than ever before, we're living in a world of massive opportunity. Yeah, massive disruption. Yeah, massive challenges right now, for sure. I mean, we with empathy, we recognize that it's a very crazy time in the world right now. A lot of people unemployed in the US, the world being disrupted by so many different things. Um, but what entrepreneurs realize is that hidden in every obstacle is hidden opportunity. And it's not that you exploit uh, people's pain, it's that you actually solve problems. That's what entrepreneurs do. They solve problems. So when problems go up, that means it's the opportunity for you to help people, to serve people, to make an impact, to start YouTube channels that solve new problems, to start to write books and create Zoom trainings that solve new problems, to to connect with companies uh, if in direct selling or something that's solving a problem that you can get behind and then leverage social media and leverage uh, an era of massive opportunity. Stay connected to Peter. Here's the tips and we're gonna land the plane on the sixth tip. So you gotta figure out your why, number one, write down your reasons. Number two, write down your strengths and frustrations. Number three, increase your certainty. You gotta get around people. That's why I love listening to, we didn't even talk about it, listening to Peter's mixtapes. If you wanna check out some really powerful stuff for your mindset, um, go to Spotify or Apple Music and he's got these kind of motivational mixtapes that also are very practical and tactical. Uh, ambition is priceless. He's got a really good one for the pandemic. And getting around thinking different, getting around the right network, getting around the right people. Stay connected to the VI show. Stay connected to Benji and the whole Video Influencers team because I have a feeling this conversation and this energy is different than what dinner is like with your family. No disrespect to your family, right? But like, chances are hanging out with your friends, you may not be getting people that are challenging you and motivating you and helping you think different, think bigger, ambitious, resourceful, positive, optimistic people. You gotta increase your certainty. Number four, set a date. When's your date? When's your date for going all in? When's your date for transitioning? We had a couple people already drop it in the comments. They have set a date and they're moving towards that. Then get the best training and shut out all the noise. One of my favorite things about Peter is like, uh, don't read 50 books. Read one book and master it. You know, we, we it's real easy to get stuck in content consumption, uh, but he teaches mastery over overload. So what is the thing that you need to learn, the thing that you need to do next? What is the thing you need to master next, the skill you need to sharpen next, and get the best training on that then and go all in? And then Peter, number six, is start making money. So what do we do here on tip number six? So now you take the first five tips and be, if you did these first five tips correctly, it'll be somewhat clear the options that you have. So start making real money. Results is the name of the game. And your job as a is produce results whether you feel like it or not. And here's what I want to share. Business is business. So this is not a time. If you're transitioning, let me say this very clear. This is not a time to be obsessed and absolutely love what you do and have a hundred percent passion. That is a myth of entrepreneurship and a myth of society. Make sure you love what you do a hundred percent. I don't love everything I do, but I do it because I, I understand the benefits and I do enjoy some of it. But the reality is I'm doing it because I want the lifestyle and I want to impact and help people. So there's things I don't enjoy. So business is business. Find a way to make some money. Figure out the low-hanging fruit based on your strengths. If you have to join a specific sales company, whatever you have to do, 
to produce the side income. This is why I created that training, um, 20 Side Hustles. Some of those things I talk about, you can literally start making money right away. Right. So I think when you start money, it increases your certainty and it increases your confidence. Right. And then it's easier to be more resourceful, to find ways to leverage that money, to find ways to systemize it. And sometimes uh, a side hustle can turn into a career. And that's the goal here. So people always say, like, you got to be passionate. Well, how you get passion is results. If you start crushing something and getting really good at something, even if it wasn't a passion before, trust me, you'll make it a passion. Imagine doing something maybe you don't love, but you start dissecting it and getting really good at it. People come to you for the advice. Then you start seeing $10,000, $20,000 months, right, for your time. And you can work from you're going to start finding a way to be passionate about it. And like you said earlier about someone that said they didn't know a lot, if you just know a little bit more than someone else and you're one or two chapters ahead, you can teach them and share your story and get paid for it. So this tip is just start actually getting in the trenches and making real money. Start failing. You want experiments, not perfection. So start testing, start experimenting, start talking to people and see how they're making money. Start following people that are making money in your industry that you want to be in and realize business is business. You're at a stage where you, you're, you're not going to always love what you do at the beginning, but trust me, money is money and you'll enjoy it because it brings freedom. Now, if you're passionate and you love it, that's a bonus, but don't be so caught up in loving every aspect of it because at the beginning, sometimes it's sloppy. People always say they hate change. No, you love change. People just hate the transition in between change that it brings because it's uncomfortable. But if you actually understand the benefits of it and you sell yourself on it, that's when you're going to start seeing real progress and real results. And progress and results is the biggest motivation on the planet. So that's what I mean by start making actual money. And Peter, you may have just dropped one of the most important tips that um, I think our video influencers community needs to hear. It's pretty contrarian because a lot of people right now when it comes to social media opportunity they kind of just say follow your passion they're like yo just we're living in the era where you can just do what you're passionate and take it, it, it online good. it true and you know what's crazy we actually had uh benji went and met with gary vaynerchuk in uh, new york and he said the biggest mistake most people are making social media and youtube right now is they're making selfish content they just want to go, uh, you know, vlog or talk about their life or whatever, which might work, but that's missing the point of business is business. He goes, do you think about the audience first? Do you think, is there an actual market there? Do you think of, about, about the practicality of it? Or do you just want to like talk about what you want to talk about and put your life online and then just be a millionaire from it? Like people get so romantic about this kind mm -hmm. of stuff they get d almost delusional and so my friends this could be a real life-changing moment for you listening to this video of the vi show business is business and what this is peter saying hey let's let's be really practical is there a proven pathway to monetization in the niche you're picking in your strategy and what you're doing on youtube again some people just are hoping they get millions of views so that that could be their living but that's kind of going to be if we say it straight 99 percent are never going to make a living that way but if you actually figure out something that there's a thousand true fans for you do the math and you figure it out, then you'll be able to maybe have a more practical path to profit, but you can't be romantic about it. Business is business. You gotta actually really do the math, be practical. And Peter, what I love about this is if I was going to start a YouTube channel from scratch right now, I would pick something in a proven niche that is, is super practical that probably wouldn't be related to my passion so that I could later fund my passion or later have the freedom. In a lot of ways, it's kind of what I'm already doing. I do love video. We do video influencers and think media, but I'm most passionate about business development, personal development, and I, in a way, haven't even really started, quote unquote, my personal brand that I'm gonna do on my Sean Cannell channel, but I've built a Death Star that I can now send a built awareness because I picked a niche, I picked something practical, I picked something truly that was also profitable in terms of the fact that people are searching for tech. It was connected to my past, my skills and my different things, but it was there was an actual path to profit. My friends, I really want you to hear this, business is business. What 
business are you in? Have you done market the market viability? Have you thought about the TAM, the total addressable market? Or is there even a market? You know, I just kind of want to talk about my stuff and like share my skits. I'm not trying to talk you out of doing you on YouTube. I'm just saying you may want to do something incredibly practical because Peter's right. Once money starts coming in, now you start having freedom, you start having choices, you start having even influence that you could potentially use for something else. And you got to remember that this is a journey, right? You you can start all kinds of things um, in your life, but uh, I would pick a proven path to profit. Peter, this has been super valuable. Uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed having Peter on. Obviously, there's so much more. And we I wanted to take some time, but out of respect for Peter's time, um, we... Uh, we aren't going to get into the the niches and some of the best ways, best industries right now. So take advantage of his training because we'll put that link in the description or um, go to his website and take advantage of his training if you want to go a little bit deeper and and really put a game plan together. But as we hear from Peter landing the plane with some final thoughts, I want to pass the question off to you. Um, what's one of your reasons? That's what we started with. That's the fuel. That's the fire. What is one of your reasons for actually saying, I'm going to get uncomfortable. I'm going to learn while others are just watching Netflix. I'm going to actually work on myself. I'm going to get, I'm going to sharpen my skills. I'm going to step out of the status quo. I'm going to maybe rise above the negativity that's coming at me. This is not easy. And so having your reasons is essential fuel on the journey. Drop one of your reasons in the comments. That's the question of the day. Why do you want to build a YouTube channel? Why do you want to build an online business? What's one of your reasons? Got value today. Hit the like button. Of course, there's uh, resources in the description below and check out Peter's book and his free training. And uh, shout out to vidIQ, our sponsor. You know, one way or another, I will say this, YouTube is essential, y'all. It is irresponsible not to have a YouTube channel. YouTube is the number one video platform, the number second largest search engine in the world. There's a reason why the most consistently influential entrepreneurs invest heavily in YouTube. I mean, you gotta look and you look at it, whether it's a Grant Cardone or a Gary Vaynerchuk or Marie Forleo, Patrick Bet David. There's a reason why you look, Eric Worre, uh, you look at so many different, not just influencers and YouTubers, but entrepreneurs understand, Brennan Burchard, that YouTube is the town square of video. It is where it is the most respected and established platform. And so no matter what niche you're in, like whether you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, of course, a YouTuber, a gamer, like YouTube is good real estate. And people who understand investing understand it's smart to invest when the real estate is on discount. And yeah, YouTube is 15 years old now, but don't wait till 2025 or 2030 to plant your flag, establish your influence. And so uh, one of the best ways to, of course, get good data and insight for YouTube is vidIQ. So you can always go to vidIQ.com forward slash influence to grab a, a free account. We have some free trainings coming up on vidIQ. That's where we get our video ideas, our things like that. And so if you haven't got that yet, and shout, shout us out if you're a vidIQ user. Um, they've got a channel audit tool, a lot of other cool things. Um, you know, No matter what I was doing and what industry I was going in, I would absolutely be investing in YouTube because it's it's truly irresponsible not to. Um, I'm all for all these establishing emerging platforms, um, but some of them will come and go and they don't necessarily have the depth and the intimacy of YouTube. Look, you should be hustling on TikTok right now. There's a chance to go viral, but what's it unto? You know, you should be posting consistently on Facebook and Instagram, but you gotta keep posting there because it's not a search engine. YouTube is the only platform where your content lives forever when you do it right you build up a body of work of thought leadership and so uh definitely check out vidIQ and then of course youtube secrets um if uh you haven't had a chance to check that out as well but peter give us some final thoughts we'll land the plane here um and um you gave us these six tips thank you so much you've got some additional resources for anybody that wants to go deeper but peter why you said it's now or never what do you mean like what do we got to do now to go all in and why is it so important don't apply anymore. They just don't apply. The, the plans we had as, as entrepreneurs and as human beings six months ago are now irrelevant. So I think it's important to realize it's time. Uh, this is a moment where you have to go all in 
on the lifestyle you want. Um, and people always ask, how do you stay motivated? Someone was even asking in the chat, I get this every day. I, I am influencer. I want to motivate people. I want to motivate my mom, my friend, my brother, my significant other. You don't. You just live your best life. You practice what you preach. You go all in and you actually walk the walk because if you walk the walk, you don't really need to talk the talk. People will want to come to you and, and get business from you and they want to be trained by you if you live your best life. So I would just understand right now, Sean, that people need to realize whatever you're doing during this crazy time in this economy, whatever's going on, whatever you're doing is going to be magnified 10 times when we come out this period. This is the best time in human history to bet on yourself and to build something that matters. And if you're working on your craft, if you're studying, if you're investing in yourself, if you're really sharpening your skills, you're going to see the benefits 10 times over the next six months to a year. But if you're cutting corners, if you're hanging out with people that are in fear, if you're watching the news, if you're watching Netflix, it's going to be a very scary time for you the next six months. And I'm assuming people watching this are the rock for the people around them. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you have people counting on you. So this is not just about you. It's about becoming the best version of yourself so you can then give back and be the rock for those who are going to need you when more people struggle and more businesses go under the next couple months. So take this time serious and really take responsibility for the platform that you're given and go all in because most people spend the first half of their life saying, ah, I'm too young to go all in and to be successful. And then they spend the second half of their life, oh, I'm too old to be successful. Now matters more than ever. And I'd love to connect with people as well, Sean. They can follow me on Instagram at Peter J. Vuk. Um, if they have still questions, they can reach out to me and just say, you heard about me from this interview and I'll give you obviously some, some time. But that's it, man. It's a now or never moment. And I don't know what else I can say to make people realize the economy is not going to get better for a while. And the only thing that's going to get better is your economy. If you focus on it and tell yourself right now matters. Peter Voog, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Uh, grateful for you. Love you, your wife and Santana, man. Excited to meet him someday in person. Uh, but uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate you. Uh, check out stuff, uh, links to Peter stuff in the description below. We'll let Peter go. Hey, as we land the plane, um, now matters, friends. Now more than ever, uh, you got to go all in. And I love what Peter's talking about. It could be really easy right now to get discouraged by the pandemic, to get discouraged by the news, to get discouraged by the, to be letting your energy just get just in every direction around you and and really lose your uh if you will focus and your passion and um and your energy and let me know if you could relate i get it like sometimes it could just be so overwhelming and a lot of it is even just emotional grief with of course the spotlight on um a much needed conversation right now of black lives matter um it's 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 crazy it's it's very overwhelming you get uh, you know, I, I'm waking up every mo uh, moment, like just thinking about just mixed emotions of the mistakes I've made and what I need to learn. Plus, you're looking at, um, you know, the economy and all what the news is saying. But at some point, you've got to get clear on what matters for your family. What is your responsibility? Um, you can't put your head in the sand right now. You got to punch fear in the face, punch overwhelm in the face. Um, you gotta, you know, I think be sensitive and empathetic, but you also business is business. You got to take care of your future and you can't delay on, on investing in your future. What you do now is going to be multiplied as Peter said, tenfold when we come out of this pandemic. Are you preparing right now, sharpening your skills right now, producing content right now? And I know you are if you're connected to our community. So I want you to know uh, from myself and the Think, uh, the Video Influencers team, we appreciate you. If you got value out of the session today, um, hit the like button. Check out resources in the description below and stay connected because over the next couple weekends, um, now that Benji's got a baby, as we speak, he's having a baby. Really, Judy is having the baby, and he's just supporting her, uh, of course. Um, but uh, I'm going to be with you next uh, couple Saturdays, 10 a.m. for the Video Influencer, shoes, uh, video influencer Show. Um, in the future, we'll be doing some... Um, 
some uh, extended Q and A's and some things like that. Um, my wife's pregnant too, though. We still got. She just told me it could be here. It our little boy could be here in eight weeks. That's crazy, man. Two months, and that'll be our first son and child. And uh, man, as Peter was saying, it's a whole nother level of purpose and motivation. I'm thinking, listen, especially parents, would my son be proud of how I responded and acted during this time? Is he going to be proud of the fact that uh, of how I chose empathy and how I um, chose to learn and chose humility and chose in the midst of what's happening in the world? Would he be inspired and proud? Would my son be proud of me that Sean Bradley Cannell that comes to two months of how I guarded my mind, guarded my health, guarded my energy and fought for our family and fought for you know, the think media team and fought for, um, staying focused. And I'm not saying that now is easy. We are living through the greatest mental health crisis the, the world has ever seen. A lot of specialists are talking about that. It makes sense with quarantine, with lockdown, with the news and with very real things that are happening that matter a lot. We're seeing a lot of a spotlight on, on things that are very heavy and, we all got to go through this and process this together, but it should not lead us to giving up. It should not lead us if, if no matter what we add up, if it ends us to not take action or if it leads us to, to just putting our head in the sand or if it leads us to trying to hide and not face this, then I think actually we're doing it wrong. Leaders lead and we got to lead right now. We got to starts with you. We got to lead your family, got to lead um, you gotta, again, and I'm, I'm in a, this whole place. I, I haven't had it yet. I, I'm about to have a kid, but it's got me thinking, man, would my son be proud of me with how I'm acting right now. And I'm, I don't know if he would, I'm not saying I'm doing everything right. I'm making all kinds of mistakes, but that thinking is leading me towards, um, you know, fighting during the midst of a, a crazy time in the world. And I want you to know in the video influencers community, we believe in you. Um, we believe in your dreams and your future. And we believe that there'll be a grace for you to stay focused, to stay disciplined, to keep learning, to push through discouragement, to raise your voice, to get over the fear of other people's opinions. A lot of you in our community, you've got a message and you've got a lot of wisdom right now that you uh, need to be sharing about what's happening in the world, but you're held back by fear because you're worried that you're going to be judged. You're worried that people are going to um, judge you, you know, criticize you, hit dislike on the video, write negative comments. And guess what? They will. You got to get over the fear of other people's opinion. You know, if you didn't know this about me personally, um, I'm a man of faith and uh, I'm a Jesus follower. And this has been going through my head a lot. I was like, Man, if, if only I could be perfect right now, because we're kind of living in an era uh, where you're kind of like damned if you do or damned if you don't. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter what you say, like someone's going to jump on it and they'll judge your motives they'll judge your heart or whatever. But as a Jesus follower, I was like, man, if only I was perfect, man, like what if I could be perfect? What if I could say the perfect thing? You know, we're talking about the divine incarnate son of God, like walking in perfection, no error. What if I could, what if I could like walk in no air? What if the think media team, that's my core business, you know, we're based here in Vegas. What if we just did everything right? We never made a mistake, you know, like we, we said everything right in the videos. We were like diplomatic and kind and, uh, you know, then our lives would be drama free. You know, we wouldn't get any negative comments. It would get all likes on our videos. You know, everyone would just be, it would just be just this aura of divine bliss surrounding us at all times if we could be like Jesus, you know? And then I was like just studying and just reading and studying Jesus's life. And I was like, there's nothing that could be farther from the truth. You're talking about somebody that no matter what you believe, historically is this incredible figure who walked in mercy, loved people, had these amazing teachings, right? Was doing miracles, like it was like healing and helping and just like this incredible 
human that we as Christians believe is the God man, right? And uh, is, is, is the savior of the world. But no matter what you believe, it's a really good historical person to study because homie was hated, bro. Like you want to talk about polarizing. He did everything right. And people were like, he's wrong so much. So they killed him. So here's my question. If perfection incarnate is going to get haters and is going to get people coming against him and is going to get misunderstood. Some people are like, he's demon possessed. Other people were like, he's a drunken, he's drunk. He's a drunk and a glutton. That's kind of what the world is right now. It's like people on both sides. Everybody's got opinions. <laughs> right? Everybody's got a everybody's got an opinion about you, about whatever. Listen, you got to get over the fear of other people's opinions. You got to get convicted. You got to know who you are. You got to know yourself. You got to know what what you stand for. You got to know your values and you got to realize that look, these relationships on the internet they matter, but at the end of the day, it's just the people that are closest to you at the end of your life that need to love and respect you the most. John Wooten, the famous uh, basketball coach, said it's a it's a trap to give too much into the haters, but it's also a trap to give too much into the praise. Giving too much into the haters will lead you to discouragement, self-doubt, inaction, but giving too much into the praise will lead you to pride and will lead you to start getting full of yourself. Both is a trap. Listen, you got to be on mission. So influencers, it's about getting focused right now. It's about getting clear on what your mission is, getting clear on what your vision is, getting clear on the fact that you're going to level up your skills, getting clear on getting the best training, getting clear on what does your family need. They need you to step up. They need, they need you to get serious. They need you to shut out distractions and stop the madness, stop studying everything and leading your own self to overwhelm. Stop the overconsumption of content. Focus on the right content. Build your certainty by be connected to the right network. Focus on your strengths. Double down on your strengths. Let your frustrations motivate you. Let your whys motivate you and start making some money. The, the resources are there. Check out the Video Influencers Library. Check out Peter Vug's training. Check out his book. Or just get to work. You're already making money? Double down on what's working. Put the blinders on. Get focused. Because, dear God, like right now, there's a storm of distraction, of overwhelm, of emotional overwhelm. And I get it, at some point there's gonna be days where we just get knocked down with exhaustion and we need to, empathy is walking through others and their pain. So it should be disrupting us with what's happening with Black Lives Matter. Because there's so much, dude, we gotta stop the drama, man. People are saying like all lives matter. No, yes, of course all lives matter. Like no one would doubt that, that is a good person. But this is the message of the now moment Black Lives Matter, Juneteenth getting recognized as a national holiday. These messages matter. And so walking with people and trying to learn, and me as a white dude, I'm just trying to learn and, and, and be as, um, realize I got so much that I need to personally learn. So you got to walk through with others in their pain. But you also got to shut out distractions and focus on your mission. Focus on what's right for you. Because if you get stuck in the news cycle right now, man, if you get stuck on social media, if you get stuck in the scroll and you're just scrolling constantly, you're in trouble because you're not working on what's going to change your kid's future in your future. I hope this adds value. Let me know if this little rant at the end, like wherever this came from, uh, has been helpful. Hit like if you got value out of today. If you're just joining, we had Peter Vugon and he shared six tips of transitioning from your nine to five. This is real stuff, man. So definitely check out the replay and maybe share the stream with somebody that needs to see it. Um, but uh, I'm fired up because I really do feel like it's an hour or never moment. Benji and I um, met during the last recession. We met in 2009 in a small town an hour north of Seattle, Washington. And he was a real estate agent, still is, or still is a real estate investor. And... Um, I had two homes, my wife and I, on declared income, you know, during the big short, had a rental property and we're eating top ramen and living with roommates and we had other, living with a family and we had these two homes and, and my wife's health starts falling apart and the, the market bursts, the tenant in our house, he loses his job, they stop paying rent, we can't float that house, we're trying to float the house we're living in, one of the houses forecloses, we're trying to short sell the other one, my wife's in the hospital now. The church we're a part of is falling apart. We're going through an absolute storm. 
of everything falling apart around us. So if anything can maybe encourage you and help you, this 36-year-old dude has been through a little bit. Let me speak a little bit to our younger audience, but hey, to everybody, because some of you were right there and you lived through this recession, but to those that maybe you're, uh, you didn't really feel the last recession, I'll tell you this. We went through some dark days, some really discouraging days. We didn't do everything perfect. There's some days where I didn't want to get out of bed, some days where depression and overwhelm really hit us. But both Benji and I, 2009, we're here today and we're talking to you because we kept working on ourselves, because we stayed optimistic. Listen, because we connected with the right community. We connected with each other. You got to find friends, whether online in Facebook groups, in the chat right now, in the comments. You got to get around a strong network. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You're an average of the five people that you're closest to. And and if everybody around you is freaking out and overwhelmed and like jacked up on on scrolling constantly on social and just jacked up on negative news and the news and negative news and negativity, how that energy is going to affect you. Like there's just no way you could be hanging out with five panicked people and not be the sixth. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be hanging out with your family and friends. I'm saying, who are you around that's bringing courage and strength to your spirit and your heart? I thank God for Benji because, and him and Judy, and of course, pastors and leaders and friends in our community, and the books we read, and the courses we went to, and the conferences we went to, and for the last 10 years, friends, coming out of a a recession that we frankly have not hit yet, who knows what's coming up in the next here in the US in the next couple of years. Man, if you lived through 2008, 2009, that thing was crazy. Like it was a massive crash. Could be coming in the future. Here's the thing. I'm here to sit before you today and say we we lived through it. We didn't give in to discouragement. We didn't just validate and bury our head in the sand and say, "Oh well, external circumstances have have caused us to just be crushed and destroyed, we got to work. We kept working. We stayed focused. We put the blinders on. And overnight success just takes 10 years, friends. Because here we are 10 years later, 11 years later, and we get plenty of haters. But I'm like, bro, we've been grinding. Like, what have you been doing? We've been grinding for 10 years, brick by brick, day by day, step by step, I want to encourage you. You could be going through absolute hell right now. Get focused. Don't quit. If you don't quit, you win. And over the next two, five, 10 years, don't don't believe the press. Because what the news will just say is, oh, well, you know, that's real tough times. The economy is is just, this is going to be what it's going to be. It was Walt Disney who said, I heard there's a recession coming. Walt Disney, you know, Disney World, Disneyland. I heard a recession's coming. I'm choosing not to participate. It's not delusional. It's an attitude and a spirit that says where there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep posting videos. And I get it, man. Discouragement and overwhelm can lead us. And you might be like me. Sometimes you're like, you feel like you just, you don't want to edit. You don't want to shoot. You don't know what to say. You got to get that inner strength and courage and motivation because what you do right now is shaping your future. And while the majority usually don't want to be with it, Mark, Mark Twain said that if you're following the majority is usually the wrong group to be in. You don't want to get sucked up into the majority right now. You got to stay in your lane. So I, so I go into all this rant so you can get clear because we had a really powerful session today with Peter. I want you journaling and I want you writing down your biggest values. I want you writing down what are your biggest values? What is the dream that you're fighting for? What should you be doing? A lot of the clarity you already have. You already know your next right moves. Write down your next couple moves. Like what is the one skill you need to be sharpening and then shut everything else out and start working on that freaking skill, dog. Like, write down that thing you need to do and put all your focus and your energy into that. And then write down what you need to stop doing. Maybe I need to stop 
mainlining negativity because every single day it just leads me to a horrible place and I'm not able to help anybody. If my soul is sick, how can I help somebody else? You got to lead number one, yourself, number two, your family, number three, your community, and number, number four, whoever's online. You're your number one asset. If you haven't, if you're not guarding your heart, guarding your mind, protecting your mentality and your energy, how possibly can you create content and lead others? How can anybody follow you if you don't know where you're going? How can anybody follow you if you're toxic? Sorry, we're on a rant here, man. This is what happens if Benji lets me overtake the show. I just, I just, Sean's off the rails. Like, here goes the VI show. And it's, it's, we don't even know where it's gone now. But hey, I hope this is valuable. And, and I know that, I hope you feel that I truly care about you. And I'm sharing all this because I believe it's an hour no, never moment. And Peter got me fired up because we're literally living through this crazy time in the world. And yet 10 years ago, if you can just catch this moment, we were living through, my wife was dying on a hospital bed 11 years ago. You want to talk about reasons come before results. You want to talk about a wake-up call. This is a chance to wake up. This is a chance to evaluate your life, your priorities. This is a chance to change your whole future. This is a chance to stop making excuses and stop giving me a 100 reasons why you can't and why it's not going to work. If you're investing all of your creative energy into talking yourself out of this, talking down to yourself, criticizing yourself, well, then it's not going to work. It's what Henry Ford said. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. I really believe that's true. So that means now is an hour never moment. Whether you think you can get clear. Come on. I hope you've been taking some notes. I hope you've been journaling. I was taking notes on, uh, on what Peter was saying and, uh, excuse me. I'm so grateful for him. We got to land the plane. Thanks VI team for hanging out for the after rant with Sean Cannell, your guest host. I feel kind of like Regis and Kelly Lee. Uh, do you remember anybody watch Kelly and like Michael now or whatever? Uh, but I feel like, you know, for a while there, there would be guests because like Kelly would be on vacation. So just some random person, I guess I did co-found this channel with Benji, but you know, I'm here, you know, and, uh, and now I'm completely off the rails, uh, but uh, I, I appreciate you. Listen, my man, Neutrally, been holding it down. Shout out to Carla and Gabby and everybody and uh, the whole VI team. Appreciate you, Mike and Tycho, for being here. Listen, hit the like button if you got value. Check out all those resources. And if you want to spend some days studying, check out Peter's training. Check out the Business Minded Content Creator Series. Uh, be reading. Turn off the news and turn on an audiobook. Join the VI Club. Uh, Benji does a lot of Q&A channel reviews. And uh, if you haven't joined, you get bonus resources as well as the uh, extra uh, Q&As and all that kind of stuff. Hey, I, I want to see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be back. Uh, I think I've got one of two really cool guests uh, for next Saturday. Pumped about that. Um, in the meantime, remember, this channel is all about helping you build your influence make income so that you can ultimately make a greater impact in the world. And so uh, grateful for you. Uh, be sending love, well wishes, and prayers to Benji and Judy if you want to shout them out on social media at It's Judy Time at Benji Man TV. They're having a baby. Today is the day that the fourth Travis girl is coming into the world. Congratulations. Pop a champagne bottle break a champagne bottle over the side of a boat like what are we talking about i should probably go before uh before it gets crazier than this love y'all appreciate you see you in the next uh vi show if you want to check out the um business-minded content creator series click or tap the screen right there with peter voog and myself if you want to check another video out from video influencers just click or tap the screen until then keep crushing it keep smashing it and we will talk soon peace